Hello, everybody. I want to welcome you to the actually the August version. I think I'm right. The August version of the of the Plain Talk. It's actually our our monthly webinars we have for the general public. And I want to welcome you guys and, and thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, basically, what we're going to do tonight is we're going to talk a lot about reset. You know, a little a little bit about the reset of your full swing, about your putting, about your chipping, but really kind of just in general reset. And we'll I'll get into that topic and get into a lot of that topic tonight. And and, it, and it's. Very interesting because we've actually done that for our members, the Single Plan Academy members. We've actually done three resets in the past um, three months. We had a full swing reset, we had a putting reset, we had a chipping reset. And um, it was a very extensive programs we did for them, the Single Plan Academy. We had some great reviews on that, but I want to give you a little bit of a little taste of that tonight because we had such good reviews on that. And I want to give a little taste of that tonight and talk just a little bit about helping you reset your game and so on, okay? Um, and then um, we'll take, if we have time, we'll take a little bit of um, Q&A at the end. I think we'll get time for little questions coming in. And then we'll also, at the end, um, we have a nice giveaway tonight, like normal. We have a nice giveaway every time we typically when we do these, these public webinars. We have, a good, we have a good giveaway for you guys to join us tonight. So again, I want to thank you guys for joining us, and, um, and we'll get rolling here. Um, first things first, um, I want to talk a little bit, just get a little bit about, our, um, about some, just a couple of announcements we have going on. First thing is I want to announce that, just remind you that we have our fall schools are on the schedule, our September, October, and I think in some November dates are up, and it's in our Phoenix, Orlando, and actually we have one Oklahoma City school, but it's primarily in our prime, prime locations of Phoenix, Orlando, and Oklahoma City, okay? Um, and I will tell you right now, I think between, our fall is not near as, we don't do as many schools as in the spring, obviously our, our winter or spring is much bigger, but we do have a great fall series. Um, our fall series typically has about 100 to 125 spots. I believe we have about 40 to 45 left, okay? So if you're interested in getting into school, and guys, the one thing I do want to state, and I want to stress to you guys, and I cannot stress this enough, and I've been stressing this for 20-some years, so I know it's going to sound like a broken record to a lot of you guys, but everybody thinks the time to come to a school is in the spring. You know, yeah, golf season starts in March and April and May, you know, and, and I want to get in, you know, in February, March, get ready for my golf season. And because you know, we'll sell out our spring schools like that. I mean, we'll literally put them on the calendar, our spring schools to go bam, 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 and they'll be sold out. Let me give you a little secret. The time to come to a school, and I've said this for 20 some years, is in the fall. And here's the reason. Because we're going to give you a bunch, and I'll be very politically correct on this, a bunch of information to work on. On things on your full swing, your short game, your mental game, your you know, on-course instruct, we're going to give you a ton of stuff to work on, okay? And think about it. If we give you this, all this stuff to work on, to work on your game, so it's very individualized when you come to a school, and we give you all this stuff to work on, all of a sudden you want to go play in some important rounds in two or three weeks, you think you guys have time to work on it? It's not even close. You do it in the fall, and all of a sudden you've got time to work on it through the late fall and the winter and the early spring until your next season starts. Yes, I know some of you guys sit in the warm climate. Your season goes year-round. But I also know golf starts slowing down when football season kicks off. When the sun goes down earlier, I know it starts slowing down for a lot of people, okay? But the time to get to a school to get the most out of it is in the fall. And I cannot stress that enough. And you will thank me if you actually do it. You will thank me and understand why I'm telling you that, okay? I promise you it is, okay? I promise you it is. Guys, so we have some spots left in Phoenix, Orlando, and Oklahoma City. I mean, those, our Phoenix Orlando schools, you guys know, it's our creme de la creme, our unbelievable locations. Come, come join me out in Phoenix. We've got our indoor-outdoor facility, and it's, my, it's absolutely the best short game facility on this part of the planet. It really is, okay? If you're interested in it, 405-250-6960, 405-250-6960, or you can always email schools at gravesgolf.com, okay? Schools at gravesgolf.com. You can always get it. You can do that, okay? Um, and I will tell you, there is a couple of them that are – pretty close to full or getting close to full. So if you're ready to pick, get those, get in there, okay? Um, second announcement, I only got a couple of them tonight, is um, the club I have in my hand. And I told this to the private membership, um, and I'm gonna tell it to the public now. The Mo Norman Signature Full Toe Wedges, okay? Mo Norman Signature Callaway Full Toe Wedges, Sand and Lob Wedges, have been out of stock for quite a few months. We, they were introduced earlier in this year. I think they're basically, I think it was like April or May. And literally in a couple of weeks, we sold out of them. They, or we sold Callaway out of them, okay? They are now back in stock. They're all back in stock as of today, okay? They're back in stock. So if, you get, so if you're ordering any of these wedges, which are the ultimate, we suggest, sand and lob wedge in your bag to create maximum spin, maximum feel, maximize your short game. This is the wedge, okay? 
It'll be fit to you perfect for length, line angle, shaft flex, grip size, the whole jazz. We fit to you guys perfect. If you want to get in there now, get them. There's no weight on them. Okay? They'll take a little time to build. It'll take, I think, about a week, week and a half to build free, and then they ship right out to you. Okay? Now, the one thing I do want to tell everybody out there, because I know a lot of the members have been getting these. In fact, thousands of members have been getting these. The face is called a raw face. It is raw. Okay? Which means there's chrome on the back, chrome on the heel. You know, you know we got steel shaft. It's a beautiful club. It's chrome. It's a beautiful club. You can go on, on our website and you can see them. Okay? The face itself, from the heel all the way to the toe, from top to bottom, is raw. And they will, and they are supposed to have rust form on them. That is the one legal material you can have on the face of a club that creates more spin. And they want, and you want that on the club. You want them to semi-rust. The front of the club, you do not want to be chrome. If it is a slick chrome, it will not create as much spin as a club that has that is rough. Now, some will rust a lot. It depends on the climate you live in. Some will rust a little bit, okay? But we want it on there. In fact, most touring professionals, in fact, they all use raw faces. They all do. But most of them will take and actually soak the wedges at night, pull them out to create their caddies, do, and create more rust on them just to create more spin. You want that on the face. I know on the Single Plane Academy and our private membership account on the, um, in the Facebook page, there was a big debate about the rust in the face, and it's supposed to be there, okay? You guys, if you want to take it off, you can brush it off and come off, but don't take it off. You want it on the face. You'll be shocked at the spin you can create with these club, ball clubs, even out of the rough, out of bunkers, out of even light dew in the grass. You'll be shocked at the rough. All good players play these. I've had them in my bag forever. I've had raw wedges in my bag forever, okay? That's what you want, Okay, anyway, so they're in stock. If you're interested in them, Tim G at GravesGolf.com. Tim G at GravesGolf.com. That's me. Email me. Well, I'll take care of you. I'll make sure you're fit perfect. Get you the best deals on them. You can trade in clubs, charge them if you want. And, we, and they're in stock. Okay, they're in stock. We, go, we can get them to you ASAP. Last, last um, thing, and then we don't have a lot of announcements tonight. Okay, this was a little bit kind of confusing even for me. I just did, the last webinar I did was a private membership webinar. It was, a, it was the 10 percenters group. So single plan Academy members, I hope you've seen it now. It was a webinar we did, it was an hour, it was a couple weeks ago, on the mental game. And honestly, I didn't think it would be as crazy as it was, but it went off. It went crazy. In fact, we had more response and more, and more people came to it or talked about it than any webinar we've done the past five years. Okay, it wasn't even close. It was nuts. And I mean, literally, I'm still getting people are just going, going crazy about it. Okay. And I, honestly, it kind of took us by surprise, took us by storm. We actually did that webinar because we had a couple members. It was kind of a vote. And they said, we'd love to see something on some mental game again. We haven't seen it in a while. So we did it all about it. You know, we did the pre-shot routine. We did the green zone, red zone. We talked about the post and pre the post analysis and pre-shot and pre-round analysis. We talked about the longest walk in golf. We talked about, you know, how to get ready for your round, how to get, how to, you know, get that come down from your round, about the I wills, the I do's, you know, the, we talked about the yippee skippy drills. We did all kinds of stuff in there. It was a, it was a blast. Okay. We had a great webinar. Well, here's what happened. I put out a mental game school, an alert attitude of indifference, mental game school, and it sold out in 54 hours. Okay. It was a three day school we're having in November. Me and Paul Monahan, we run that school. I haven't had it in a couple of years. Because of COVID, sold out in 54 hours. Just sold out, boom. It's going to be an unbelievable school. Okay. Well, here's the, the biggest thing about that is trying to get Paul in, trying to get me together. And Paul's a world expert. He's a, he's a performance specialist. Okay. Before you want to talk, performance energy specialist. Works with a lot of professional athletes, a lot of professional museums, professional teams. Paul is our mental game coach for Graves Golf. It's very hard to get Paul together in person with me and him and so on to do schools. So we've decided, since that school sold out so fast, to do a mental game, an alert attitude of indifference, mind of Mo, mental game masterclass. So that's what we're doing. We've now, and we've never done this, okay? We've never done a masterclass over the mental game. And we've started putting a brainstorming on it. And we've got, I mean, it's literally, we've got 40 topics already we're going to cover on this thing. It's crazy, okay? But basically what it is, now I'm not going to go over this a lot because you guys will see a ton on it. But basically what it is, it's going to last almost four months. It's going to come out with five in about two weeks. Or I mean, it's going to be a two-week deal that's going to have like five classes. Or boom, 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 boom. They're going to cover a lot of different topics. You know, like post-round, post pre-round, 
score analysis, scope analysis, you know, green light, red light, you know, pre-shot routines, how to get ready for your round, you know, conscious versus subconscious thought, mental game, the mental game of golf, okay? It's gonna talk about that. It's gonna be a lot of five sessions, boom, 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 an hour to plus each. Then we're gonna have a Q&A to follow those sessions. Then we're gonna have, for the next three months, almost going to four months, we're gonna have Zoom sessions with you guys with guest speakers brought in that are experts in the field. Paul Monahan, I'm sure, will be monitoring or be part of this, but we're gonna bring in guys that you've, I'm sure you've heard of that are gonna be talking about performance and the mental game of golf, how to peak your performance to help your performance. Okay, it's, it's, this is a big deal. This is a really big deal, okay? Now, the reason I bring it up, and I'm gonna end it here, is we threw out a sneak peek to the Single Pen Academy members. You guys got it. That was the email we sent out, okay? So if you were interested in registering for that, that was the email. If you missed the email, you didn't get the email, you didn't know what it was, email me or email us, we'll send you it again. The reason I'm bringing that up is, think about it, we're having Zoom sessions, we're gonna have breakout groups in this thing, okay? It's gonna be extremely limited. I can't have thousands of people in this thing with Zoom, I can't do that, okay? So if you're interested in this, and this is gonna be knock your socks off mental game. I mean, if you guys saw the webinar, if you guys know about the master, the, the schools we do on this, the, the, um, the mental game schools, we do, and then we're, now we're doing a more, um, uh, master class in this, it's going to be crazy good, okay? Get into this thing, and get into this thing early. It's going to be extremely limited. Right now, the members, you're getting the first shot at it. So we have a limited number. It's going to be very limited. So if you're interested in this, get into it now, okay? And I can't stress that enough. In about a week to two, we're going to open it up, probably about two weeks, if we have any spots left, we're gonna open up to non-members. If we don't have spots left or not, just like the mental game school, the one with Paul and me, we never opened it up to non-members. It was for members only, because by the time we put it out, members sold it out, okay? So that's what that's it. So you guys, you should have got a sneak peek email on that. Hope you did. If you didn't, you can always email us or call us and we'll talk to you about it, okay? We'll talk about it and get in for the, introdu get in for the introductory and get in early. And I'm suggesting get in very early because it's gonna sell out very, very fast, okay? I wanted to put, honestly, I wanted to put in as many as we could. And just have, but when I talked to my staff and I talked to Paul and I talked to the guys, they really wanted to do these Zoom sessions so we could see you guys, interact with you guys personally. That's going to be really cool. Now, if you can't make the Zoom sessions, we're recording. You can watch it like always. Okay. So anyway, so that is the Alert Attitude of Indifference Mind and Mo Master Class that we're going to be releasing soon. So you heard about it first. So I can't say I didn't tell you about it. All right. Um, we have some other specialists tonight, but I'll go over those as we go through this. I want to get into the, get into the instruction tonight. We also have the giveaway at the end. Actually, we're going to have two giveaways tonight. One kind of, one kind of interesting one that my, my staff asked me to do. I thought that was kind of cool, so I'll even tell you about that. So instead of just one giveaway tonight, we're going to have a couple big giveaways. I mean, school giveaways, okay? So, but let's talk about what we wanted to talk about tonight, reset. And let's just talk about what the word reset means, okay? Because, you know, here's what it came down to is about four months ago, we kind of, we put out a little, it was basically a questionnaire to our members, the Single Plan Academy members, and we said, what type of instruction, what type of information are you looking at from, from us? What, what do you want from us? What do you want to see us do? And when we start, start compilating and putting it all together, we realized they really were talking about something like refreshing what they can, what we can do for you. Like resetting, not starting over, but resetting. In other words, give me a game plan of what I can do on day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, all the way for a 30-day period, what I can do each day to improve my game. It went from, you know, from my full swing to my short game. What can I do? In other words, I don't want to guess. I want it. This is what I need to do in day one. This is what I need to do in day two. This is what I need to do in day three. Hey, guys, let me tell you something. 99% of what we did in this reset program for our, for our members was you could do inside. It wasn't something you did on a driving range. It was literally focus on your swing or your short game inside. Okay? And obviously, and the members know this, that it was like work on it for a couple of days and, and you know, do this, do this for a couple of days. Now, sending a video to the coach, have him check to make sure you're doing it right. Then do this for a few more days. I'll send in a video to the coach, check to make sure you're doing it right. And it couldn't be simpler. But we did that because we wanted to keep them on the right path to getting better. Because think about it. I could sit there and say, do this, do this, do this. And you're doing it wrong or you're, do, you're practicing it properly. And I'm just digging a bigger hole for you. Okay. So we wanted to have a continual check, just like a trainer. I mean, guys, if you're going to go work out and get better and stronger and you want to get better and stronger, you're going to go get a trainer and that trainer's not going to say, you have to see me every day, but he's going to check on you every so often, 
okay? He's going to do that every few days. He's going to check on you. That's what we want to do in this reset. And it was a big hit. And I, and I assume most of the members out there have seen it where you've gone through the resets or you're going through the resets. And guys, here's the other thing. These resets never end. You can do it and you can do it again and you can do it again and you can do it again. It's set up to improve you anytime you go through it. Because what the resets were all about was really just hammering on the core fundamentals and making sure doing our drills, using our training aids, you know, using the ultimate you know, single plane system was to get you to improve at a good pace for you, but a guaranteed improvement. That's what that was, was about, okay? And that's what the resets were about. Because here's what it comes down to. Everybody goes out on the golf course and they'll have bad hole or bad days or bad weeks or whatever it is. You know, we all do. I don't, care, I don't care if you're the best player in the world or a brand new golfer. It happens to everybody, okay? And, and if you don't, you're, you're lying to yourselves. You'll go out and all of a sudden you get in a rut or you call it no bad, whatever it is, okay? And they try to themselves figure out what's going on. They're like trying to say, okay, you know, they, they come up with you know, a cause effect relationship, whatever. They're trying to figure out what's going on. And I'll tell you right now, 99.9999% of the time, it is a breakdown of a core fundamental that they have done a while back and they've done a compensation to make up for that breakdown and that compensation is falling apart or has fallen apart, okay? And that's why when we talk about the resets or every time we talk about instruction like this, we're always going to fall back to those core fundamentals. We always are. And it's a great refresher. And then the biggest thing I want you guys to get out of this tonight is that anytime things go sideways or anytime things are, or you're trying to get you know, that next step, you've always, always, always got to go back to the core fundamentals, okay? You have to. And I'm going to talk about, and I'm going to bring this up tonight, and, and I'm going to bring it up, and, and you guys, you've probably seen this before, but I want to talk about the single plane position trainer. We'll be start. We're going to go through three or four of these tonight. The single plane position trainer is number one, okay? But I want to talk about why this is such an important tool and how you can use this if you're resetting your swing or trying to get back to the basics, okay? But let's talk about this because it's interesting. We will, I'll, I'll go out. Guys, I've taught students 100 lessons, and I'll put this in their hand and say, now look at that black piece of tape, and they'll go, I didn't even know that was there. And they've used this thing for like a year. And I'm like, what are you kidding me? I mean, it, whose fault is that? Probably more of our fault for not reminding you of that. But the point is, is that we've got to focus on the specifics. We've got to get down to the detail when we're doing these resets, okay? And I'm gonna bring, show you an example of that. So I basically set up a station here, okay? I set up basically a full swing station. I got two golf balls in front of me, okay? Can they get those in the camera? Do we have those in the camera? Make sure those in the camera, okay? So I got the two golf balls in front of me. There we go, okay. So I've got ball position. I got an impact position. I got a ball a few inches back behind it. That's my setup position, okay? Then I have another ball that's five feet back and one foot in, okay? So we're set up. Now, I have my alignment and ball position trainer. So I have this set up right now. And guys, critical. If you're not using alignment and ball position trainer, I'm just going to say this. I don't even care. If you're not using alignment and ball position trainer and you're a single playing golfer and you're not using it, stop wasting your time and just, I mean, honestly, just leave. I'm serious. Because this is like the ultimate basic. And so basic, I'm not even going to go over it tonight. But this is ball position. This is literally width stance, distance from the ball. This is like the ultimate setup tool. And I just assume every one of you guys is using that tonight. If you're not, it's a joke, okay? It's literally a joke. In fact, if you're not using it when you practice basically every time, I don't even want to be associated with you with single plane, okay? Because it doesn't make any sense, okay? So I got the ABT down, okay? I'm assuming you use it, okay? Now, I'm going to get in my six iron whip. Okay, because when I have my single plane position trainer, when I get down and I put the grip on it, it is a six iron length. Number one, fact number one, don't forget this. It is shocking how many guys will take a single plane position trainer and they'll get wide as a driver or they'll get as narrow as a wedge. Uh-uh, the length is a six iron. Okay, so we're going to get six iron width. Here we go. Now, I'm going to get six iron distance from the golf ball. That is 26 inches. You can take a yardstick. You can, whoa, you can lay it down underneath the ball position mark. You can lay this down and you can stand 26 inches from the toe line to the golf ball. Okay. So right now I'm 26 inches away. So guess what? I am in the ideal setup for ball position, 
for distance from the ball and for width of my stance. We're resetting. Understand what we're doing here. Because I can promise you right now, if you got things that are going a little sideways, it is typically ball position, tempo, or alignment. Well, guess what? I've got ball position, not only ball position, how far from the ball, but where my ball is in my stance, distance from the ball, and width of the stance. Okay, because notice something here. I have a six iron. Ideal ball position. Love it. I get too wide. What just happened to ball position? Hmm, went too far forward. Okay, that's bad ball position. I can't get there anymore. But here's what typically happens. We get too narrow. Now the ball's too far back in the stance. We'll shank it. We'll skull it. We'll top it. We'll pull it. Okay, because we got too narrow of a stance. So I'm going to get to that six iron width of a stance. Boom. Now I'm 26 inches from toe line to the ball. Now I set up in a good position. Now, as I set up in this position, which is my setup position, I'm going to check a couple things. And I can do this with a single plane position trainer. Here's number one. I know I have a good grip because I have a molded grip on here. If you guys are just taking a normal golf club and doing this and you get your hand rotated to the right, rotated to the left, it's already over. Because that club face relationship is no longer valid to get the face squared impact if your hands are rotated under too much on top. So with this, I'm guaranteeing a perfect grip. Again, another reset. Checking my grip. Okay? So, perfect width, perfect distance, perfect grip, a perfect setup. As I get in this position, I'm going to keep my knees straight but relaxed. So they're not flexed. They're straight but relaxed. So they're not locked. They're straight but relaxed. Now, the, this single plane position trainer is touching what we call the pivot point. So it's a straight line relationship from the lead shoulder to the ball. Okay, straight line relationship. And if you go from the down the line relationship, it's a straight line relationship from the bottom of the forearm through the shaft of the club. Great thing to video, great thing to look on a mirror. You can see it. But what I will do is I will feel it on this pivot point right here. The beauty of the single plane position trainer is if I look down, I'm set up right. When I look at this black tape, I can't see the white on the left. So if you know this single plane position trainer here, and I'm going to walk in with this piece of tape, there's a black piece of tape on here. It's a width for a very specific reason. Okay, I'm going to kind of rotate it there. There's the black line right there. Boom. See that width is a very specific reason. If I set up in this position and I can see the white on that trainer, my hands are typically too far under or they're too low. So I should not see any white on the left of that trainer. I should just see black all the way. It looks like it rolls over the side. So now I look down. Perfect. I see no white on the left. Okay. Now, from this position, notice, lead arm's straight. The trail arm is slightly flexed. It's basically, we call it soft. It's relaxed. It is not tight. Okay? It is relaxed. Now, I'm now what we call position zero. Okay? Now, what I'm going to do from position zero, so I've talked, basically, all I've talked so far is setup. And folks, let me give you a little secret. When you're doing your resets and you're having issues in the swing or things aren't going like you want or it's not as consistent as you want, I will bet you right now 90% of the time it is in your setup. Listen to what I just said. 90% of the time it's in your setup. And if you ask my staff who teaches every single day at schools, they'll tell you it's 95% of the time. Not 90, it's 95% of the time or every time, okay? So trust me. Get in this setup and work on this setup every time. In fact, you should get in this setup just like I'm doing right now and just stand there and just feel it. Close your eyes and feel it. This is the mental game work we did last week. The subconscious versus conscious thought. Let some subconscious take over this. What's this feel like? How do I feel it in my knees? What's it feel like in my shoulders? What's it feel like in my hip? They'll tell you right now, my hips do not feel level. My hips feel like they're slightly tilted up. They should be. Okay, there's feel like there's a slight tilt. Feel what it feels like in the hips. Feel what it feels like in your shoulders. Feel what your head feels like. Right now, my nose is over that second ball. When I look down, I'm set up over that second ball. Okay, every single time. I can see that, I can feel that. Okay, that is huge because that is how you take it to the golf course. Because if you don't understand that feel, if you don't understand that concept, you'll never take it to the next level. I promise you. Okay, so... We're working on a reset. Now I go from position zero to position one. And position zero to position one, all it is is a turn of the hips and a turn of the shoulders. Now as you do this, 
it, you do slightly fold the trail arm. It starts to fold in a little bit. In other words, it doesn't say tight. It starts to slightly fold in. It's because you lose space there. So I go from position zero to position one. Now, notice, this stayed on my pivot point. It did not roll across my belly. It stayed directly on my pivot point. So a great drill. It is a phenomenal drill. It's probably one of the best drills we do in Graves Golf, without exception, is again, a perfect ideal setup. Set up over it, go zero to one, and all I want you to do is focus that this position feels exactly the same. So I feel it touching my pivot point. I go to position one, it's still touching the exact same point. Because here's what happens. If you go to position one and it goes across your belly, you don't move your hips, you don't move your shoulders properly, you are already behind the eight ball. Your swing has already broken down. You will typically get steep. You'll come across the top. You won't move your hips properly. You'll try to now. It is a world of compensations for you. And you wonder how important that is or how serious it is or how much it affects our students. I will tell you right now, every single student, listen to me carefully, every single student we see at our school has issues going from zero to one. Everyone. I didn't stutter on that, I hope. Every single one. That's why they come to schools. Because if they didn't have those issues, they wouldn't need us. Typically, it's a hip issue. It's a pelvis issue. It is a movement of the hips. So you need to sit there and just practice this. Guys, this is your flexibility work. This is your reset work. This is going inside, setting up the station in your family room, in the garage, in the living room, I don't care, in your office, and just doing this. Just doing this. Just doing this. It's all you're doing. Okay? and focusing on hitting position one. As I hit position one, the single plane position trainer is touching my pivot point, it is now pointing at that ball. It is not inside that ball, it is not outside that ball. It goes to that ball. Now I stop, I focus on that. As I go from one to two, I cock and hinge the trail hand, I bring up, I turn the hips and shoulders more, the butt end of the single plane position trainer will go to that ball, okay? So now I go from position one to position two. So I continue the turn, it's not as much. 75% or more occurs from zero to one. The remainder occurs from one to two. I fold the trail arm. I cock and hinge the trail hand. Notice, look at my lead hand. And I want you to focus right here in the lead hand. Position one, position two. See a lead hand breakdown? Didn't break down an inch. Stayed perfectly flat, just like if I sat here in front of you. So what you didn't see was position one, position two, and all of a sudden the can's got cup in it or it's got bow in it. It is exactly the same as when I set up position one to position two. It's exactly the same, okay? Another reset. So what a great thing to do. Sit there with your single plane position trainer. Now, when I go to position one, guess what? I look down, I don't see anything on the left side of the tape yet, okay? I might, I, nothing. If I rolled my hands in, guess what I see? I see all the white on the left. If I go to one, it's perfect. Nothing. It's exactly like I saw it right here. Go to one, nothing on the lead hand side. Realize how important that is. Because if you go from zero to one and you slightly roll your hands in, you're going to see white on the left hand side of the black and that tape. Your hands are now cupped. You go to the top, that is no the top's move. And here's the other deal that get cupped. It is a cupped. It is a significant lack of distance issue. Because somehow you're going to have to flatten it out or straighten it on the downswing, which is going to Make, mess up, or have issues with the face of the club. So, you go position zero to position one. I can't see, I can't see white on the side of that tape. Perfect position. Now, I go one to two. I look up. Guess what I can see? It looks like the black is dead center of that single plane position trainer. I look back, and that black stripe is right in the middle. I see as much white on the left as I do on the right. It's perfect. Okay? Love it. So, I, so I'm not cupped here, because right here, when I get to the top, if my wrist is cupped, I see no white on the right. If my wrist is, is the other direction and it's got hinged, now I see no white on the left. So if I go to the top of my swing, I see perfect. I see just an equal amount of white on the left and right. Hmm, wonder why that checks there. Okay, now I go to pos from position two to position three. As I go to position three, elbows get in front of my trail hip. The butt end of this is pointed towards right field. I look down. I see white on both sides. Now I go to impact. Okay, now here's the deal. This is what we call a reset. Because here's what happens. 
Golfers think they can go to the range and pound balls and pound balls and pound balls and figure it out. You know, let's go pound some balls and we'll just figure it out. We'll just figure it out. Well, that doesn't make much sense, does it? Because if something's breaking down or not working or not where you want to get it, and you go to the range, how are you figuring this out full speed? You've got to bring it back and reset back to the beginning. Reset back. Okay, let's figure out where we're breaking down the fundamental. And I promise you, you grab this, you take this setup, you will find a couple immediately. You'll be like, boom, boom, okay, yep, 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 okay, yep, I got that. You will find a couple immediately of breakdowns, okay? You guys, we see it every time. It is amazing how many times we go to schools. It's amazing. We go to golf schools, and we have students who have been with us for three, four, five years that we've never seen in person. And we'll put the single plane position in training, because obviously we train pretty heavily with this at the school. And we'll have the same setup for them. And we'll get them in front of a mirror. We've got a mirror at every station at the schools. And we go to position one, and they immediately they look at you and go, I've never felt that. Well, that's what it's supposed to be? That's not, and we're like, yeah, what, what have you been doing? I mean, I, we're not blaming them. I mean, it just, it's, it, it's difficult at times. But we're like, okay, so think of the conversations they're putting in their swing every single time if they've never truly hit the correct position, okay? And guys, this is why we built the resets. We did the resets in the Single Point Academy for this very reason. And we broke it down and step by step by step by step and went into extreme detailed so that they, you could figure out, okay, where am I breaking down? Where am I not? Where am I good? Where am I not? That's what this was all about. And then we asked and we hoped you send in a video, which could be the simplest thing in the world, send a video to our coach and they tell you. So if you couldn't figure it out or maybe you didn't know if that was quite the right spot or maybe just a check. Maybe the coach said, hey, that looked fantastic, that you're doing great. Now let's go on to the next one. We wanted you to do that, okay? That's what that was all about, okay? So that really, guys, the reset for the full swing right there. Okay, that's what we, um, I cannot stress that enough. Maybe you guys got some questions on that. Maybe you heard it so much, you, it's almost a nauseum, but really focus on what this trainer is supposed to do for you. It's crazy. Also understand, there's no club head on here for a reason. And we talked about this in the mental game class and in the workshop, and we're on master class talking a lot more. The reason is, is because it's a conscious versus subconscious thought. The second you put a club head on a club in front of you, and start working on these positions, your conscious thought goes to that club head. Your eyes, your because here's the deal. I promise you. And here's a, here's, a, here's a check for you guys. Take out a club. Put it in front of you. Set up and don't look at the club head. Look at something else. It'll freak you out. Look at the shaft. Look at your grip. Swing the club. Look at your hands. It'll freak you out. You can't do it. You focus right in that club head. You have been brainwashed to look at that club head. In fact, a lot of you look at it going back. Okay? You've been brainwashed to watch that club head. Well, guess what? If I'm saying work on position one, position two, with the club in your hand to start, it's not going to do it. You will miss so many of the checkpoints because you're so focused on this club head. Well, all of a sudden, we put a single play position trainer in your hand. There's no club head. So what do you focus on? You focus on your pivot point. You focus on your grip. You focus on the bend of your trail elbow. You focus on your knees. You focus on distance to the ball. You focus on what the hips feel like. You focus on what the shoulders feel like. And all those that do this again, please. Back up three steps and focus again on what the hips feel like when they turn. Focus on what, the, what the, the pivot point feels like. Focus on that again for me, okay? So, reset, full swing. There we go. Now, let's, jump, let's go back a couple notches. Let's go, let's go, to, the, let's go to the chipping. Because we had a huge chipping reset on the two. We had 30 days of chipping reset. In fact, that was the, the most recent one we released. In fact, we have a pitching reset. I can look at my staff. We have a pitching reset coming up soon. A 30-day pitch next, next month, okay? Guys, we did a full swing reset. We did a putting reset. We did a chipping reset, which reached 30 days. Now we're going into a pitching reset, right? And that's coming out here next month. So that's literally 100, well, it was 120. It's going to be 120 days of work, and we'll have another one after that, okay? But the point is, is that we've already released the chipping. The chipping was the most recent one we put out. Okay, now let's talk about chipping and what to look at, okay? And what I'm going to do here, and this is stuff you guys can do inside again. We'll drop some more stuff here. All right. So I have my short game ABT. My lineman ball position trainer for the short game. Okay. Same thing as the long swing. I've got ball position here. I've got feet position. I got width of the stance. I've got the whole thing in here. Okay. Uh, and the biggest and one of the biggest things on here is I've got alignment technology. So you got lines on here. Guys, if all you used on this was the alignment technology to keep your face square when you set up, I'd be such a happy camper. It's unbelievable. So I'll tell you right now, you guys go out and chip with me in schools. There's a 90% plus chance when you step over a shot, your face is open to the target. That's going to create a slice and over the top move every single time. It's the number one air golfers make when they chip. Is they set up, they put their hands forward and their face gets open. 
This makes you square up the face, okay? Welcome to reset again. So I'm gonna set this down. I'm gonna do this inside. So I'm gonna set up. I've got a couple wiffle balls. I got a couple soft golf balls here, or I can do without golf balls. Now here's what I'm gonna do. Here's the reset. Reset number one with the short game board, okay? Is I'm gonna take the lower body and I am gonna open it up. Huge mistake golfers make. Right now my feet are square. I drop my trail foot back. It does nothing for me. I also have to twist. That twisting motion opens up the hips. If you forget to twist, you will not open up your hips. Okay? That's why if you look at this board, the feet are at an angle on the board. It is to remind you to twist your feet. Okay. So, you twist your feet. Now, we set up. Our feet, our knees, our hips are open. Our shoulders are square. So I can put a club across my shoulders. I can check my feet, shoulders square to the top of the board. My feet are open. Do you guys understand if you don't have this board, what are you checking against? It doesn't make any sense again, okay? So now, shoulders are square, feet are open. Feet, knees, and hips are open. Ball position is back. Now, I have a short game impact trainer. The reason I have this is because it has a molded grip on it, okay? A molded grip. And it has the leading edge has negative loft to major issues in chipping. Because the biggest issue golfers make is when they choke down, they twist the hands to the right of the club. Okay. We call it motorcycle gripping. They twist to the right. They get a strong grip and they tow down the club and chunk the shots. Folks, you go on the golf course, you hit some chips and you chunk them like you chunk them into the ground. There's a 90% chance plus your grip's too strong. How are you going to fix that? How are you going to fix it? Okay, here you go. Short game impact trainer club. Short game impact trainer. Puts a perfect grip on there. Now, I set up over this. Now, what I do is I push my hands forward. Listen to me carefully. I push my hands forward with a perfect grip. So when I push my hands forward, it doesn't rotate to the right. Please understand that because this is what a majority of golfers do. And I got a wedge in my hand. They set up. They go, oh, yeah, my hand's got to go forward. They push it forward. They grip it. The grip club gets major league strong. So when they put it up in front of that toes up, they will toe into that ground every single time, chunk the shots, pull the chips, have major issues every time, okay? So that's what the short game impact trainer does for you. It makes you have a perfect grip. Now I set up over it, I'm gonna take a chip, I'm gonna hit down to hold my finish. Now, with the, I'll do it with the golf ball to start. So I hit, I hold the shot, I hold the finish. Now, here we go. Reset, 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 reset. Where's the club head? Club head is still square to the target. When I look at this board, the grooves are still square to the top of that trainer. Reset number one. Reset number two. My hands are still ahead of the club head. They have not flipped behind. Reset number two. Reset number three. My lead knee is still flexed towards that lead toe. In fact, it's gotten more flexed towards that lead toe. It didn't come across. Okay, reset number three. Reset number four. If I look at the distance, and this is massive, and I want you guys to focus on this tonight. When I set up, and I'm going to put a golf ball here. I'm going to put one behind it, so you guys can see this. And I'm going to put one ahead of it. Okay. And these are this, I suggest doing this inside with some soft wiffle balls, nerf balls, whatever. If you guys hit into a net inside, you can get in your backyard. Now watch this. I'm going to hit a chip and watch where my club head finishes. Where did it finish? Straight down the line. It didn't go inside. It went down the line. So how would I not hit that towards the target? So when I took it back, I folded my elbow up, club came in, guys notice that, so watch. That ball's back behind me for a reason. So as I sit up on this, I fold up, that club's not going like that. It's not like a putting stroke, it goes in. Now I make impact and it goes down the line. Okay, so I set up, hands leading, down the line. The only way I can get that to go down the line and maintain that is by flexing the lead knee towards that lead toe to keep the club going down the line. If I take this lead knee and I pull it out, that's the over the top move. So welcome to reset 101. Because I'll tell you right now, most of you have issues with pulling the ball, coming across the top, coming over the top, getting off plane. 
Well, you want to go back to basic reset. We take the single plane position trainer out. We start getting up in a good setup. Now we're getting a decent setup. Now let's get motions of the hands down the line. This is how you get the motion of the hands down the line. Notice, I didn't go a whole lot of detail into position three and four on the single plane position trainer. Yeah, it's great to work on that, but if you want to go in and you want to do this inside or with balls, boom, I'm down the line. Guys, you can't miss that. If you do this and the club comes inside, that you're going against the whole principle of single plane. You're going against the whole principles of hands leading. You're going against the whole principles of hand down the line. You're going against the whole principles of Mo saying, I pull the flag out of the hole with my hands. You're going to the whole principle of saying, Mo saying, my hands never come off the line. You're going to the whole, I can go on and on and on and on. This is Mo. This is not. It is basic 101. And I'll be honest with you, it really gets almost frustrating, maybe it does just to say frustrating, when you watch students at a school and you know they've, I'm not going to say they suffer, but they struggle. That's why they're seeing you. And they come into the school, and you, they're chipping, and they're doing this, and they're doing this. And you're like, there's no way in this earth when they speed it up, they're not going to slice it or pull it or top it. And then the worst of all is lose significant distance. Because, folks, let me give you a little secret. When you take a golf ball, you can press this golf ball straight down the line on path, on plane. You're producing pure backspin. No side spin, pure backspin. The more you get your hands on the line, the more you hit it on plane, the more pure backspin you're creating. The more side spin you put on, the less it's going to fly. Side spin puts the ball into the ground. Backspin creates the lift and flight. Plus, it gives you the solid compression. Plus, it gets you hitting the sweet spot. I mean, I can magnify that tenfold. So you want to talk about the ultimate reset, reset your distance. I mean, it's amazing how many people sit there and say, I'm just losing distance. I get older and lose distance. Like, you know why? Because you lose flexibility. You lose flexibility because you can't get your club down the path anymore. You can't get your hands laid anymore. You can't get that extension anymore. You lose your distance. Guys, Mo Norman never lost that much distance because he always hit the sweet spot and he always did with the club on plane. Okay? That was the crazy part. So when you talk reset, that's what we're doing. And guys, here's the deal. I mean, I gave you the little shorts, you know, the pitching, re the chipping reset. And then the full swing reset. But understand what the real core of reset is. It's resetting yourself back to looking at the core fundamentals. Where do I need work at? Is it my grip? Is it my setup? Is it my takeaway? Is it, the, you know, is it my hip movement? Is it the hands down the line? Where is your breakdown? Because you'll have good points and you'll have bad points. I promise you, you will. But you've got to figure that out and then reset and you're great. Even the best players in the world do the same thing. Okay? Everybody does. Please, please, please understand that, okay? That's what we say resets. And, and guys, if you haven't, here's the other deal. And, and you know, this will sound like a sales point, but again, don't care. We literally wrote 30 days of reset out for just the full swing. We wrote 30 days of reset just for the putting. We wrote 30 days of reset just for the chipping. We wrote 30 days of reset now for the pitching coming up. That's next. And there'll be more to follow because we've had such rave reviews. People love them. Our members love it. If you're not watching those resets, it's almost the point like, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. You're just guessing. You, you, come on, you are. And if your members not watch those resets, wake up. Okay? Wake up. And each one of those things is only like five or ten minutes of work. And you can do it. You, know, you don't have to do it every single day. You can do it one day, skip a couple days, do the next. It's your, it's your schedule. But it's not like you're all there pounding balls. No, no. It's five or ten minutes of work doing this. Five or ten minutes of work doing this. I mean, that's what, that's what the resets are all about. Okay? That's what they're all about. Um, we got some questions coming in. Do we have any? What's that? Okay. Now, before we get into the questions, because I want to, yeah, let's get into the questions. Um, I was going to do punting reset tonight, but guys, get on, the, get on the Single Plane Academy and go look at the punting reset. It's my pride and joy. If you, if, if you don't own a member of the Single Plane Academy and you don't see the punting reset, too bad. Okay? Because I'll be honest with you, it's too bad. You're just guessing. Um, go and members, go see the punting reset again. You want to guarantee a of handicap reduction? You guys know it. Go watch the putting reset. It's mind blowing. It's got games in there. It's got drills on there. It's got positions on there. It's got guys. It's got the drills that freaking pros do. Okay. It's got the drills that Will Zelatoris, that Jordan Spieth, that they do. That I preach to you guys. Okay. And I'll tell you how I know that because I had two of my staff members send me videos of Will Zelatoris doing one of the drills I promote in the putting reset last weekend before he got hurt. Okay. He was doing the drill on the green, and they sent me this still picture from the TV. They took some pictures. And said, hey. Look at what he's doing. Look what he's doing. I said, yep, just what I put in that reset. Okay. Now, 
the memory, and they did this, and I want to get this right, because if I get this wrong, I'm going to get <laughs> in trouble. Talk about the special for tonight, okay? I'm looking at my staff. So, you guys know we always run specials. Here it is. Here's a special for tonight. And there's, a, there's an addendum to this. Annual Single Plan Academy membership. Single Plan Academy membership. So you get access to every one of these resets, plus all our past webinars, plus all our instruction, but everything we have is in there. You get for $6.99, which is, it's normally $9.99, correct? So it's $300 off. You get three free training aids. So guys, pick your three free training aids. Talk to the ones we went over, whatever you want, plus a free short game masterclass, okay? So I, since I'm presenting the webinar tonight, you get the free short game masterclass, okay? That is actually says eight hours of instruction we did that's chipping, pitching, bunker. It's amazing. It was a short game masterclass. We did a couple. It's amazing instruction. Okay, you get that for, <laughs> for $6.99. Now, there's two ways you can get it. MoGolf.co backslash August special, or they can call, right? And they can call 866-377-2316. Now, here's the addendum to it. The first one that signs up, the first one that signs up for the special gets a free school. Okay, they asked me to do that tonight. I didn't, I didn't, honest truth, promise you I didn't know this. I was told as I walked in, they wanted to do this, okay? You get a free, it's a two-day or three-day school. Three-day school, free three-day school, okay? First one to sign up for that, free three-day school, okay? So go, go for it, okay? But, so that's $300 off normal. Now, here's the other thing you get with that. That's why, this, guys, remember, when you sign up for this, $250 of that goes to credit towards future schools. There is $240 per year in school credits. It's just like cash. It never goes away. So if you roll it, roll it over the next year, the next year, the next year, the next year, okay, you just keeps adding up and adding up. And so it's, it's airline miles. So literally, you pay $700, bucks, 460 am I doing this right? It gives, you get the three free training aids. You get the free master class. Am I right? Which pays for that. I mean, the training aids are 125 bucks a piece, right? It's over 1100 bucks. There you go. So $1,100 value for 700 bucks. And you get the 240 credit that goes on forever. You never lose it, as long as you remember. Okay? So, Tanya's main in the phone. It's 866-377-2316. You can call her. She'll take care of you. Guys, it's normally $9.99 for that. You get all our on-demand. You get everything. And, FYI, this mental game masterclass coming up, you'll get the sneak peek to it, and you can enroll in it if you choose. Public's not getting this for a while. In fact, it may never go out to the public. I don't know. Depends how many we can handle on the Zoom and how many members sign up. So, it is, there's, guys, there's an unbelievable amount of benefits to it, okay? So, $6.99, three free training aids, short game masterclass, mogolf.co, August special, or 866-377-2316. Don't miss a chance. Come on. I mean, just go in there. Tell you what. Just go in there and go start studying the resets. Forget everything else. Just don't get, don't get overcomplicated. Just start with the full swing reset. 30-day 30 30 day instruction. Go to the short game. Go to the punting reset. 30 days of instruction. Go to the chipping reset, 30 days of instruction. If you zip through that, you can go to the pitching reset because it'll be in there by then. You zip through that, there'll be the next reset in there. Just do that. Forget the other 20,000 hours of instruction and all the other instru and all the instructional information and all the past webinars and all the training tips. You forget that. You can use the go to if you want. Okay? Plus, you can send in a video to the coach anytime for free. Anytime, all the time. Never do that, it's fine. Just go study the resets. Study the resets. All right. Um, got some questions, and then we have another giveaway at the end of the night. We good in that? All right. First one. When using the ABT, is foot position different for people at different heights? George. Uh, no, George. That's a great question. We get that all the time. So here's the alignment ball position trainer, okay? And this really freaks people out. You know, I'll give you a couple examples on this, okay? Here's number one. This thing, this alignment ball position trainer fits anybody from five foot four to basically six foot five, six foot six. With average arm length when, when you get the extremes okay now so and here's why here's reason number one if you look at each one of these areas there is a zone so there's a little bit of give it's not like an exact spot like that's a five and six on there's a little bit of a zone that's number one but here's number two as we get tall our arms get longer as we get short our arms get shorter it's just the way it is so with that being said we can set up in this positions and be in a good position because we're trying to maintain a 45 degree angle with the mid iron, a 50 degree angle with the wedge, a 40 degree angle with the driver. Okay, you guys start studying this. I mean, I'm not going to go in detail on that now. But we're trying to get particular angles to make an ideal single plane setup. 
those angles allow for the width of the stance to be the same when you get tall or short within reason. And again, this fits for five foot four to six foot six. You will think a five foot four person, that's really wide for him. It is not. Remember, Mo was five foot seven. Mo was five seven. And believe it or not, when you measured Mo, he would actually at five foot seven would be on the far edge of this. Because that's the driver width. Notice, it says furry wooden driver, and there's a zone here. Mo, when we measured him, he'd have been on that far end of this with his driver. He's only five foot seven. Okay? Now, if you happen to be tall and go a little bit wider, we're okay, but never narrower. Yeah, you didn't hear me say that. Okay. So, but this fits from five foot four to six foot, basically six foot five, six foot six. Okay. It fits that. Okay. And we can talk individually about that. We got another question. All right. Old muscle memory habits die hard. When I'm in the middle of a round, I tend to overswing and over rotate. What should I work on to correct? Yeah, William. Well, guess what? It's a huge topic we had in our mental game workshop. It's a huge topic we have in our AAI schools because there's no such thing as muscle memory. Okay. No such thing. My muscles do not have memory. What it is is your conscious versus your subconscious thought. So here's what you got to do. And here's the other thing. Most people don't over-rotate. What you do is you don't rotate properly. Listen to what I just said. Notice what I did. When I went from position zero to position one, I moved the hips and shoulders, okay? So I went zero to one, and from one to two, I still moved the hips and shoulders to get in a proper position at the top of my swing. Here's what happens. People go zero to one, they don't move their hips. Now they feel like, oh, I over-rotated because my hands are behind me and I'm flat. You didn't over-rotate, you didn't rotate properly, okay? And I'll tell you right now, I will tell you right now, out of all the students I've seen, out of 100 students, 99 will rotate improperly, one will over-rotate, meaning they turn too much, okay? And that's so, work on proper rotation, okay? That's number one. Number two, understand something here. I understand what you're saying by muscle memory. We all, people say that, okay? And, I, and yeah, I gave you a hard time in that. But the, that is your subconscious movement. Muscle memory, subconscious movement. How do we break down subconscious movement? I'm giving you a taste of our mental game workshop. I'm giving you a taste of our, our AI school. Is we have to create conscious thought, doing it again and again, that then overrides the subconscious thought. How do you do that? What you have to do is put a focus on the positions you are working on exactly. And the best way to do it is to take the golf club out of your hand. Because the second you put a golf club in your hand, you're focused on the club head. You're focused on the shaft. You got all this, these things that you built up for years and years and years, your muscle memory. Now we put a stick in our hand and we start focusing on the positions and we do this again and again. You do this when you warm up before the round. You do this when you warm down after the round. Huh. That's a different one. How about walk off the golf course, go have a beer with your buddies, you know, take a little money or give them a little bit of money, whatever you do. Now, go out in the parking lot, go home, go in the driveway at your house, and do this again. That's an interesting thought. Why? Because you're fresh. It's fresh right now. You're fresh in your mind. Let's work on that. Post-round routines. Post-round practice. Interesting. Guys, the number one player on tour right now, Scotty Scheffler played and won a major this year. And after the major, he practiced it like in the, after the second round, the third round, he's on the round, right on the range, practicing, practicing, practicing. And literally the guys in the booth were bashing him. Why? They're bashing him because like, he's hitting it so good, he's playing so good. He was doing his post round practice. Why? He wanted to work on the things that he felt like were breaking down in the round. Okay, yes, he had his coach watching him. He could have been videoing it and sending it to his coach. Guys, we talk about this a ton. That's how you break down muscle memory, okay? So work on the individual positions, work on it again and again and again until it becomes unconscious movement, and then you can go into now good movement. Got another question? All right. Is weight in both in feet balanced in the middle of feet, ball, balls, or heels? Good question. Okay, we'll talk about it, Larry. Perfect reset topic. I love it, Larry. Because here you go. Single plane position trainer. ABT. And I better be set up perfect because if I'm set up with too much flex in my knees, I'm already done. It's going to feel like the weights on my heels and I'm done. If I'm too far from the ball, it's going to feel like the weights on my toes. If I set up in a perfect position to the ball, 26 inches from it, now all of a sudden the weight when I set up is on the balls of my feet. It's not on my heels, on my toes, and the balls of my feet. It is a very athletic, powerful position. If you set up and it's a great thing to feel, we talk about no reset. If we set up in this position, it feels like it's on the heels, I promise you, you're standing up too much or you've got too much flex in the knees. So now in position zero, it's on the balls of the feet. I go to position one. 
the weight shifts towards my trail foot, but it is still on the ball of the foot. And when I go to position one, it is on the middle of the foot. When I go to position two, guess what? It is still on the inside of the foot. Listen to what I just said there, because this will freak a lot of you out. I go position one, position two. When I'm on position two, proper knee flex, it's not straight. There's a slight flex in the trail knee. Proper knee flex with that knee flexed in slightly. The weight is still on the inside of the foot, on the ball of the foot. Now I am in an exceptionally powerful position to go to impact. If I go position one, position two, and the weight goes to my heel, if my weight is on my heel on the outside of the foot, it is a guaranteed, if you weight shift, you'll come over the top. It's a guarantee. You cannot drive from the outside of your foot and on your heel to the inside. You'll hit yourself. You won't be able to do it. You literally will fall over. So when you go to the top of your swing, the weight is on the inside of the foot and the ball of the foot. There is a slight flex in the trail knee. Now we can drive to impact position. As I drive down and I go to impact, now the weight goes to my lead toe, my lead inside ball of the foot with the weight shift going towards my lead foot. So as I go to impact, I feel more weight on my lead side than my trail going to flex lead knee. But Larry, I love that. And look at our reset program. I love that because you do the training, you will meet, think about it. You're out there losing the game. It's not making sense. I can get over top of a golf ball on a golf course and feel my weight and my feet and hit some shots. I can, that's I'm phenomenal. But you got to train that first. And you got to train it slowly. That is huge. It's actually kind of an answer to the question before about the muscle memory, okay? Because most guys that over rotate, the weight always goes to the outside of the foot and it always goes towards the heel, okay? Great deal. Great thing to work on. Got any questions? Another one, okay. When you talk about hitting down on the ball when chipping, what does it actually mean? Okay, Doug, good question. Doug, there's two things you can do in a golf ball we can hit down, we can hit up, okay? And most golfers, for a lot of different reasons, will flip the wrist and hit up. So when they're hitting the golf ball, the ball is the club is actually hitting an upward blow. Blow. It's actually going upwards and trying there because they think they have to lift the golf ball. So subconsciously or unconsciously, they flip their hands to lift. But in all golf shots, besides the driver and the potter, we hit down on the golf ball. So when the ball's in the back of the stance and chip, we are hitting down with the hands leading and the angle of the club is going down. Now to make that easy with the chip, we back it up. In fact, the further you back a chip up, the more downward blow you'll have. And if you look at my short game master class I did, we actually had specialty shots. I did hard pan, I did high grass, I did bunker shots, I did into the lip, on the lip. I did, I, you can't name a shot, we didn't go over that short game master class. We covered these different shots in there about where to even adjust a chip. Because there's guys, there's sometimes we put a chip even further back, okay? Create more spin. You guys hear about the, you know about the Texas wedge where you hit it down and the ball comes really low and then checks really fast? We cover that in the short game master class. All right, but that's the angle of hitting down. So when you hit down, that creates maximum spin and a lift on the ball for a short little shot. That's why this short game impact trainer is huge because it's got negative loft in the bottom. So it's got a great iron, but in the bottom two grooves are basically negative. So if you try to flip it, it's going to top. And you will instinctively start hitting it down to get the ball up in the air. Guys, that's a perfect impact trainer. It's what it is. This is a short game impact trainer. Guys, I teach quite a few juniors. I teach a lot of ladies. I have juniors I teach all over the country. I'll go see them. You know, we'll come in. We'll talk to them. We'll see them. Every single one of my juniors I teach, and, and these are all going to be college players, every single one of them practices with this club. This one. Todd called me the other night. He called me, it was two nights ago. He's going up to Canada. Todd's in Canada right now. And he's bringing, he's seen a couple of juniors there. Basically, Mo Norman's nephew's kids. That's who he's going to go see. So Mo Norman's nephew's kids. I don't know why they're related to Mo, but Todd was going to go see him. And Todd said, one was five foot four, one was five foot two. They're like 13, 12 years old, whatever it was. And he said, and he talked to me because I want to bring him a couple. And I said, and I said, Todd, it's this short game impact trainer. I mean, everybody, this is it. This is the club. I said, we're going to put that in their hands. And, and, we're, and he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're talking about it. He's like, this is perfect. It, guys, adults, ladies, juniors, this is the ultimate club to chip with. It's, it's not even close. To learn to create that spin and that pinch and the ultimate chipping and full swings with this club. There is no doubt about it. This makes you hit it down. But you're hitting it down to create that spin and that lift. So when it hits on the green, it checks slightly and then rolls out. Checks slightly and rolls out. That's why, as you see in our instruction, we'll actually do what's called a ladder drill. 
will sit there and will have a landing zone. You're landing it in that zone. And when it hits that green, the first thing it does is it hops over the second stick. And the reason it does is, is that's the check. That's the spin. And if it doesn't hop over it, you're not creating enough spin. And the reason we have to do that, because guys, if you don't do that, it hits that green, it's never going to stop. It's going to, especially in fast screens, it's going to roll and roll and roll. You can't control it. We've got to be able to check it. And then that leads into the full swing, which then creates your spin and lift on the shots. Now I'm talking every club in your bag, from your irons to your hybrids to your fairway woods. It's every club in your bag besides your driver and your putter are hit the same way, hitting down. And this is how you train it. Welcome to Reset. I love it. Because guys, if you're not working on hitting down, <laughs> wow. I mean, wow. I mean, you're, you're, if you're flipping it, I mean, it, it gets, oh man, that's a struggle. All right, ne next question. We got what? Okay, Kurt Johnson. Kurt Johnson from where? Flint, Michigan. Oh, Kurt, we actually lived in, Todd and I lived in East Lansing, Michigan for a while. I'm sorry, it's not that close to Flint. I don't know where Flint is. But um, Kurt Johnson from Flint, Michigan is our first sign up and wins the school, three at school. Congratulations. Congratulations. Um, yeah. Come to Phoenix, come to Orlando, come home and see you in a couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. What's that? September 5 day? Okay, so you want to see upgraded. <laughs> okay, sweet. September 5 day, come see me. <laughs> okay, so yeah. All right. Any five day schools, by the way, you're going to see me or Todd or both of us. So, all right. Okay, so we got another question. Okay. Should head be level or at the tilt angle when nose over the ball? Okay, great question. And guys, I'll do my short game back trainer. This is the length of a nine iron, okay? For shorter people, it's the length of an eight iron. For taller people, length of a wedge. Okay, but it's nine iron for me. So I set up. I'm in a good position. When I set up right now, notice, I've got my lead arm above my trail. I'll do it down the line. Lead arm above the trail, okay? My trail arm slightly flexed. As I set up, my head is in a natural position. I'm not tilting my head back. It basically lines up with my spine. So if you looked at my spine and my back, which I know it's kind of hard by myself, my head lines up with that spine. So it's very simple. Put it on video, have a coach put it on video, and they'll put a line right through it. Boom. And it'll line up with the spine. Most golfers, especially older golfers, do this. They lean back with their head too much. They tilt back with their head. If you tilt back with your head, when you make impact, it's going to have to go forward because it's not lined up with your spine. And it needs to and wants to line up with your spine and impact. So what you don't want to do is set up and tilt the head back more. It lines up with the spine, and the spine's at a slight angle. Slight angle. That's why the nose will be behind the impact position slightly. And the wider the stance, notice. Now let's bring that up. Here's a nine iron. It's only back an inch or two. It's very small. Now, I get wider with the driver. What just happened? My nose, the spine angle stayed pretty close to the same, but my ball, my nose went further back, so then the setup with the club head gets further back because it's underneath the nose still. That's the consistency moded. That's what moded. Um, Tim, okay, next question. Tim, what does the feeling of greatness feel like to you? Christian, I love that. What does the feeling of greatness feel like to you? Um, that's a great question. Um, well, welcome to our mental game school. That's awesome. Christian, it, there's a couple different things. Number one is the game, the feeling of greatness. The game, there's always ups and downs in the game. But there's never the incredible highs and the incredible lows when you got the feeling of greatness. Meaning, you never fight it that much. You're always hitting it decent. You're always hitting it consistently, okay? The second thing on the feeling of greatness for me, and this is really the truth, is when I make impact and I'm hitting it well, I mean, it feels like the ball never comes off the line. I mean, I can literally sit there and is the, whether I'm taking a punch knockdown shot or a full swing or a... I mean, guys, you know how many times I hit into the wind, a 30 mile an hour wind, I'm hitting this knockdown shot. You know, that's, you know, you know, normally I hit a seven or like 165, and I'm hitting it like 140 into the wind. And I hit it, knock it down, and just stay straight down that line. Never leaves the line. That's the feeling of greatness. Their thing about the feeling of greatness, honestly, and this is the biggest one, and this is what we cover huge in our mental game information, our work, in our master classes, in our schools, is the confidence of going from the range of that first tee and not being concerned and not being worrisome about what's about to happen. You really can't wait to get that first tee. You really look forward to it. Do you get nervous about rounds? Sure. Do you get nervous, you know, that you're going to have a tournament coming up or you're playing a club championship? Sure. Do you get nervous you can play through by Sure. Nerve, I'm not talking nerves. I'm talking the fear. There's so many golfers that play this game by fear. And when they go to that first tee, they're just afraid of what's going to happen. I can tell you right now, Mo was never afraid of what was going to happen. Ever, ever. 
Mo looked forward to what was going to happen. He embraced what was going to happen, good and bad. Even if it was bad, Mo always said, let it teach us something. Let it teach us something. He embraced it. Guys, this is a massive topic in our alert attitude of a different school. This is what I just said. Alert attitude of indifference. Ding, ding, ding. Alert attitude of indifference and feeling of greatness go dead together. Dead together. Alert attitude of indifference, feeling of greatness are synonymous. And Mo said he always played by alert attitude of indifference. And what? And developed and lived by feeling of greatness. And that's what I'm talking about. You guys, that's why you guys see how passionate I am about our mental game stuff. And hopefully, members, you guys saw the you saw the webinar last week. Any new members, get in the resets. Go watch the two weeks ago's webinar. Go watch it. It was we had more response than than ever. Uh, members, be looking for that sneak peek. If you've lost the web email, you didn't get the email. Maybe you for some reason blocked our emails. Whatever it is, email me at timg at gravesgolf.com or just what the what's the we can go to the membership as I we can go there. And anyway, you can email any of us. We'll send you that. You can do it to Brock to me. We'll all send you a copy of that, the sneak peek of it, okay? It's going to be very, 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 very limited because it is going to have some Zoom sessions in there, and we got to limit those, okay? Um, we got any other questions, anything else tonight? Okay, um, we got we got one more giveaway tonight, but before we do that, um, the special again, because we got a few questions on that. So $6.99 is $300 off the normal membership price. That's an annual membership. Um, you get the annual Single Plan Academy membership, three free training aids, your choice, your choice. Um, you can get the ABT, the short game ABT, you can get the short game impact trainer, you can use the single plane position trainer, any one of our training aids, okay? Um, plus the free short game masterclass. So a lot of what I talked about tonight is on that short game masterclass. I mean, it is, covers all areas of the short game, okay? Um, and then you can go to mogolf.co backslash August special, or you can call the 866-377-2316. And Tanya's getting that live, am I right? Okay. Okay, training aid. So, um, feeling the greatness training aid, normally $129. Um, free if you choose what's not special. You see, Todd, that. Guys, you can also, you know, on demand, when you go in there, it has all our different training aids on there. And actually, it's videos on how to train with those. So, you know, okay, and on our membership site. Um, and then, so we got, these are the most popular. Excalibur training aid. Guys, and the reason we brought that up is because we've been talking Excalibur for the last week. And when we talk about the putting reset, we talk a lot about that. But the Excalibur training aid. Um, you know, the devil's sword, as they call it. It's the ultimate putting training aid. You want the quickest reduction of handicap? By far, practice with this Excalibur. Your putting is almost half of your game. If you're, if you're even an average golfer, you've got to improve your putting. It takes the stress off the rest of your game. Practice with Excalibur. It won't be easy at first. It's not meant to be easy. Use this, you'll get significantly better. Make it a challenge. Use it indoor only. I take it on the road with me. I throw my bag. Guys, I, right now, I'm traveling once every two weeks for four or five days. I take my clubs with me because I want to get some practice because I'm in playing season. I throw this in there. I usually teach all day long. In fact, when I go out to, on the east, on the west coast, I teach 11 to 12 hours a day. Okay, I teach from 8 in the morning until about 9 at night. And I'm teaching a long days. I want to practice. I go to my hotel room. I throw this down on the ground. I practice 10 to 15 minutes out of my Excalibur. If you guys aren't, you're, you guys, you're, it's sad. It's sad. I mean, I'm gonna, I mean, I'm sorry, I'm gonna kick your ass in golf by using Excalibur. It's just the way it's gonna be. You guys know I am. I don't cut I cut to the chase. Okay. That's what all the pros do. What we do. You want to be a good player, you want to play like a pro? Freaking figure out a way to practice like one. Okay, the next one. Perfect impact training club. That's one you can that's the full swing training club. Just like I talked about with the short game, the perfect impact training club's right here. You can get that if you want using the full swing. Okay, it's an impact trainer head with the full swing grip. You can work on that. I'm working on impact. You want to take full swings. Notice the picture Todd there. Notice who's got on his feet, the ABT. Do not use the perfect impact training club if you don't have an ABT. Stop wasting your time. Stop wasting your time. If you don't have an ABT in your mind, say other stuff, that's ridiculous. Okay, it really is. Okay, so perfect impact training club. And then short game masterclass. We sold it for 500 bucks. That's what we sold it for when it went out. It's free with yours tonight. Um, if you want. And FYI, um, can they get that if they don't join it? If they just want to buy a master class, can they do it? If somebody just says, I want the master class? 497, okay. So if you don't want any of the specials tonight, but you just want the short game master class with covers, chipping, pitching, bunker play, all the different lies, I think it was eight or nine hours of short game. Um, I shot it over like almost a month and a half. It was, it's the, it is the short game instruction. If you don't want the specials, I can get it for 497, okay? You get that free if you join for the membership tonight. 
And then you get the um, $240 per year in school credits, cash towards per in-person training. All right. So last thing, I'm going to have a question for you. So I have a current member, because I'm going to ask this, who has never seen the Short Game Masterclass, and they're a member right now. So they're a member. They're watching this. They're already a member, and they want the Short Game Masterclass. What's it cost them? The Short Game Masterclass, they've never seen it. $197. Okay, so they get it for $197. So they get $300 off. Is that right? Okay, so members out there, if you haven't seen the Short Game Masterclass, you get $300 off if you're a current member. Okay? Yeah. We all, guys, that, well, thank you for being a member. All right, so we good? Anything else? Okay. Grand prize giveaway. All right. So um, and it was a two-day short game school. So whether you want to or not, you're going to be with me. <laughs> okay. So you'll be with me and my master instructors. Typically, we have them always in Orlando or Phoenix. I'm going to give you a suggestion. Come to Phoenix. It's amazing. Um, the winner of that's Roger Bell from Las Vegas, Nevada. Yeah, Roger will come to Phoenix. So he'll come down to Phoenix. So yeah, we love, we love Vegas, Roger. We love, we used to do schools in Vegas. Love it. All right, so Roger, so congratulations, Roger. Guys, thank you for joining us tonight. Um, we will we'll be announcing a lot of things coming up. Members, look for that sneak peek of the, um, the, the Mental Game Masterclass coming up. Look for your sneak peek. Public, everybody else, guys, get in the schools. Get in the schools, get in the schools. Fall is the best time. Sign up for a five-day school, you'll be with Todd and me. Some of them will be with both of us, okay? Three-day schools, my master instructors. Get into the schools, get in ASAP. They will fill up pretty quick. They always do. All right. So guys, thanks for joining us tonight and we'll talk to you very soon.